Hey, welcome back, Northgate Eagles, this distance learning counseling team. Uh, we've been talking with you for the last few weeks about different topics like calming down skills, big feelings, gratitude skills, how to stay busy at home, kindness. And then my favorite was last week with, with um, the uh, positive self-talk Jeopardy game. Uh, if you haven't watched that, you might enjoy that. Um, this week we're going to talk about responsibility and I was trying to think about how we define what that word responsibility means. We respond to things and we have an ability to do it in a way um, that is really respected. And, and I think the definition is it means you do the things um, that you are expected to do and you accept the consequences of, of your actions. So you consider um, what the situation is, where you are, um, those things like honesty and respect, fairness, courage, all those things are often involved in responsibility. Um, being responsible can make your life better. Um, it boosts how you feel about yourself and how others feel about you. We've looked at this before with, we have, um, and here we have, ah, there it is, our behaviors, our actions. And they influence our feelings and other people's feelings about us. And they include, they, and it creates thoughts about herself, like thoughts of confidence and thoughts of trust from other people. So um, this week, uh, we, we're starting now with a video uh, that I really enjoyed that is about um, kind of like how to be responsible. Um, Ms. Sarah, do you have that to play for us? Yeah. Here we go. This is a let me know if you can't hear it. 20 things we should say more often. Number 20, thank you. And not just on Thanksgiving, every day. Number 19, excuse me. Number 18, here's a surprise corn dog that I bought you because you're my friend. There'll be more corn dogs, the more happy people. This is a good idea. Corn dog for you, corn dog for you, corn dog for you. Number 17, I'm sorry. Number 16, I forgive you. Number 15, you can do it! But don't say it if it's something I can't do. Number 14, another thing that we should say more often, I have barbecue sauce in my shirt too. Before you say something about the barbecue sauce on somebody else's shirt, take a look at the barbecue sauce on your own shirt. Number 13, please. Number 12, everything is going to be okay. Number 11, oh, you got me a corn dog too? You shouldn't have, buddy. Number 10, I don't know. I know a lot of people who need to say that. My sister. <laughs> Number nine, you're so awesome, I named my dog after you. Oh, wait, wait, that could hurt someone's feelings. I mean, boat, I named my boat after you. Wait, who even have the boat? You're so awesome, I legally changed my name to yours. Wait, that's super creepy. And, and just tell people they're awesome and mean it. Number eight, hello, person I've never met before. Here's a high five. Number seven, my sports team is not always the best sports team. It takes a big man to say that. Number six, nothing. Sometimes that's the best thing you can say. Number five. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, but it's really funny. <laughs> Number four, I disagree with you, but I still like you as a person who is a human being and I'll treat you like that. Because if I didn't, it would make everything bad, and that's what lots of people do in this lane. Whew, I need a water break, y'all. It's okay to disagree, but it's not okay to be mean. Number three, sometimes you just gotta scream. <laughs> Number two, life is tough, but so are you. Sometimes we all need to be reminded to keep going. Number one, something nice, anything. If you can't think of anything nice to say, you're not thinking hard enough. So what about you? What do you think people should say more often? Leave a comment below and let's hear it. Oh, and I got a bonus one for you. Something that we should say more often, let's dance. Open 
still got the music. There we go. That was awesome. I've seen that video before, but every time I see it, it just, just brings more joy. Um, so that's a little how-to, and I think the list was quite long. And it's a good reminder to keep re-watching the video, just like these topics that we bring up. Keep watching them, keep bringing them up. You might learn something new every time. So I think what this group wanted to do next is talk a little bit about that responsibility, right? Like those how-tos. How do we do it in different areas that we are in right now? And so we're gonna think big, we're gonna start big first, and we're gonna talk about responsibility to our community. Community may mean those that you care about, those that you are around, those that live around you, um, the places that you are able to get to if you need to right now. So one things and the how-tos of how to be responsible to your community are things like if you are leaving where you are staying right now, we want to keep a healthy, safe distance of six feet. You know, if you are in a place with other people that aren't usually with you. So stick your arm out even farther than that. We want to make sure we keep a safe distance. That's being responsible because you're caring about somebody else's safety and that of your own safety, right? I think this was maybe number one or two of the video. We talked about saying thank you and really saying thank you to postal service workers, people who bring your mail, grocery store workers, delivery people, healthcare, everybody that is working in healthcare right now and your teachers, right? The teachers that are working so hard to stay connected with all of us right now. Some things that we can do to be responsible to our community is to stay home unless you have to go outside because if you can stay home, you can just keep yourself and your community safer. And when you're outside, you're keeping that safe distance. We want to make sure any sneezes or coughs stay in your elbow, right? Some of you say, you know, cover your elbow like a vampire. That was the old one. And now some kids like do the dab, sneeze into it if you'd like. I don't know, whatever you'd like. And if you have access to one, I made one out of an old t-shirt, but wear a mask. Wear a mask um, keeps the keeps your air clean and safe and it protects your community that you are in. So those are just a few ways. And if you can think of extra, let us know. Let us know how else you can be responsible to your community. Excellent. Um, and then now we're thinking, moving on from when Ms. Jack is talking about the community, then we think about what's next layer in. And that's the family or people that we live with, our close, close um, ones to us right now. Um, and thinking about family, we can play a really important role in our family. Um, and you can even do things that maybe sometimes um, others don't ask you or you don't or don't notice or don't realize that needs to be done. So I'm going to give a few examples of responsibilities in our family. Um, the first one that we might think of straight away is you can help with chores. Now we all love chores. <laughs> But you know what? Chores are like working as a team in a family. Um, it helps everybody make everybody's day a little bit easier. Um, and chores should be the right level for you um, so that everybody, so it's appropriate for you. Um, that's something that you can do uh, without too much um, difficulty or, or probably ideally chores, things that you can do without anybody's help. Um, so then you can do them independently. Um, so have, if you haven't got any chores, maybe that will be a great thing to ask your caregivers. Um, what could you help with right now? And it gives you something else to do every day um, or every few days. So that's um, helping with chores. That's a great responsibility. Something that we could all do is keeping our space clean. Um, look around. Have you put your toys away? Have you put your books away after you've been um, doing some schoolwork? Maybe you're uh, working in a space that somebody else is gonna need in a few minutes or later this, today. So have you put your things away to make sure it's clean for your family and to help others in that way? Um, I can keep track of my things. Now, I'm a, I'm a mum and I've got two kids at home who are homeschooling and this is something that helps them so much when they're doing their schoolwork right now is if they know where their markers are, if they know where their pencil is, if they know where their eraser is, just, just and, and maybe a spare piece of paper, 
um, for if they need to draw, you know, to try and work that problem out. Um, if you can keep a little kit of those sorts of things ready for your schoolwork um, and keep it together, and when you finish your schoolwork, put it back together again but, and put it somewhere where you know it is. Um, keeping track of your things for schoolwork, but also the other things that are important to you um, will make you feel good as well and make your life a little bit easier. Um, and that ties into the next one about putting things away. It's the similar type of things, but after we play a game, let's put them away before somebody steps on them. You don't want them to break, but also you don't want anybody to get hurt. And I'm a mum who stepped on a lot of Legos in my life, so I understand that that can really hurt. <laughs> Um, um, but um, the next thing idea, there's lots of ideas here, but for a family um, that can really help is, is having a schedule and having a schedule. And the reason why we have schedules is because it helps us in the mornings. It helps us get up in the morning and know what we're going to do. Um, and it helps us keep going during the day. If we know we've got this to do and then we get to do something else. Um, I'm going to put, uh, well, we're going to make a few schedules for you to put um, and have them on the website. And that's an activity you can do after you've watched this video to think about in your week, what would you like to do when? What are your teachers asking you to do when? Maybe put a few chores in as well and then make a schedule for yourself. Give it a go. It can often feel really good because at the end of the day, you've completed your schedule too. Um, and then the last few things about your family are, are, are things that I heard uh, Mr. President, uh, the kid president talk about as well. He talked about saying something nice um, and saying thank you. And all those things come together in being kind to people um, that you stay with. Um, that's so important right now. It can be hard. Um, and if you want to think of a little bit more about kindness, um, there's a video from a few weeks ago. You can scroll down and check that one out. Mm -hmm. too. Um, and last sort of things I'm thinking about are listening to those around you um, and respecting those that are those that live with you right now. They might need a little bit of space sometimes. We all need a bit of space sometimes, um, and especially because we're with each other so much right now, we have to stay in our places. So it can be our responsibility to sometimes see that, say, hey, I think my adult needs a bit of space. I'm going to go take myself off and do something else just to give them a little space. That would be an amazing way to take responsibility for those that you care for and those that are around you right now. Um, and I'm going to do, go for one last one at the end is just that I'm sure you're playing lots of fun games uh, with siblings, but just remember how you can be a good winner and also be a good loser too. It can feel really hard and frustrating if you're disappointed. But that is something you can show your siblings to. Um, and you'll probably be a great example if you can do that for them too. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody out there to really use your huge imagination right now and pretend I'm a fifth grader. <laughs> and I'm going to be a fifth grader who does distance learning and has really now figured out everything about how to be responsible with distance learning. So. I'll tell you what I do. I pay attention to my teacher, to the expectations of my teacher. I show up for any kind of lessons that might be available online. Uh, I come to the class meeting when we have a class meeting. I finish all my learning packets. I do all of my assignments. Well, I do my best on my, on my assignments. Sometimes I get stuck, but then I ask for help. I, um, I work on IXL, I work on RAS Kids. And when things get tough, I just keep trying. That's called perseverance. Um, and I, um, the last thing is something that's kind of hard for me as a fifth grade uh, uh, student, but I'm trying to become a leader in the class meetings. I'm really trying to show everybody like how we can make the best of these opportunities we have. And Miss Nia? You have response, you're the one with responsibilities in the last context. Yes, had to find the unmute button. <laughs> so I, we have talked about um, responsibility to our community, responsibility to those we are staying with and living with, and responsibility as a distance, distant learner. And now I'm gonna talk about responsibility to ourself because that's just as important and some ways to um, stay responsible to yourself are um, to go to bed 
on a schedule the same time each night and get enough sleep because that is so important to be able to follow through on all these other ways we're talking about staying responsible. Um, another responsibility to ourselves includes keeping good hygiene, brushing our teeth and washing our hands frequently, um, eating healthy food and trying to stay active. We have to take care of our bodies, um, admitting mistakes and not blaming others. That can be a really difficult one, but mm -hmm. super important. And we know you're all capable of doing that. Um, using positive self-talk, which we made an awesome video and game for last week. So you can check that out on our website. Um, managing big emotions and small emotions. We're responsible for that. Um, we're also responsible for asking for help when we need it um, or we're feeling overwhelmed. I know I've had to ask for help many times these past few weeks when I'm feeling overwhelmed with everything going on. Um, and we're also, um, another way we can show responsibility to ourselves is by being patient. Things are really difficult right now. And so um, we can be gentle with ourselves and patient with ourselves. Um, and those are a few examples of ways to stay responsible to yourself. and. Um, we welcome any more ideas you can think of. So in conclusion, I just want to um, reiterate what Sarah said about we'll be posting a few different ways of you to make a schedule for yourself. I think some of you know, but maybe not all, that I am also a student. I'm doing um, graduate school at the University of Washington. And just like you, I have online classes and I have lots of things that I have to keep track of for my distant learning. And it can be hard, especially when it doesn't, Mondays don't feel like Mondays anymore. And so I have to make my own schedule for myself about what I do each day, like volunteering at the food bank. I wouldn't wanna forget to go to that. Um, I'm responsible to my community in that way. And so another thing I like to do is to make a to-do list. And I make little check boxes and write everything down. And then I get to check it and cross it off my list when I'm done. And that feels really satisfying. So if you wanna try making a list for the day of the things you have to do, it helps keep me on track. Um, so we hope you enjoyed our video today. And we just hope you know that we believe in all of you and all of your capability, capabilities to be responsible Northgate Eagles. We'll see you next week. Bye. Take care.